And again, we're going to go over chapter 12 right now. Tables have fallen out of favor to a lot of people over the years. All right, there's nothing wrong with using tables, but the idea behind a table is it should be used as a table. I know that sounds stupid, but it should be used for tabular data. That really should be the only reason to use this. I think I showed you this before, but uh, this is the thing that I'm working on with, with in the afternoon. So I can come in here and, for example, I can type in FB for Facebook, and it'll show me the information for Facebook. Okay? I can come in here and I can type in, I don't, I don't know, I've got a bunch of them down here that I listed. All right, BBBY, which is Bed Bath Beyond, BBBY. And you can get all of this information. This is just put into a simple bootstrap jumbotron, and there's really no formatting that's done on it. All right, you might hate my colors, but I was playing around with it last night. Okay, and what we could have done here is I could have had that be my heading for my table and put all of this into a table. It might have looked nicer. All right. Most people equate the way that a table looks with like a spreadsheet, and a lot of times it is. But you don't have to have grid lines with a table if you don't want them. You can have them, all right, but you don't have to have them. So, as it says in here, the basic skills for coding tables, the CSS skills for formatting tables, other skills you might want to be worried about for tables. Again, very short chapter. So one thing about using tables, like I said, in many ways, let's see, they show a picture in here. Why that's taking so long, but it's... All right, that's a good picture. All right, when you start to take a look at what's in here, notice there's a caption. By default, the caption for the table goes at the top. All right, the other place that typically you see it is at the bottom. I've never tried to put it on the left or the right. To me, that doesn't make a lot of sense, but maybe have, you'd have a reason to do that. I don't know. All right. Captions are basically, they're put in with a caption tag. Okay. Then we look in here. These tags that you see right here, book, year, published, and sales, by default, they should be, they should be TH tags. TH for table header. All right. Everything that you do in a table you put inside of TR tags. TR are table row. So table rows can contain either TH tags for table headers or TD tags for table data. All right, and that's the way tables basically work. Every single thing that's in here, so you'll notice there's one, two, three columns and one, two, three, four, five, six rows. So there's 18 cells in this table. Okay, same kind of thing again as a spreadsheet. So when you look at it, really, this is a six by three table, six rows by three columns. So you can always tell how many elements are in there. All right. Now, it used to be that what I just told you was pretty much it. People might put in a caption, then they put in their first TR tag. Inside of that TR, they had some headings, some TH tags. Then they had a bunch of TR tags for each row. And for each row, they put TD tags in there. Boom, that was it. But that's not considered good enough anymore. Now what you typically do is you take your table row that you have for your headings and you put them in a T head tag. You put your table data and you put it in a T body tag. If you've got any kind of summary information at the end, you put it into a T footer tag. All right, that's considered a much cleaner, better way of doing it. It's a more semantic way of doing it. And virtually any of that stuff that you use in there, you can apply CSS to it, virtually any of it. So again, to create a table, here's your main tags. Okay, since they are HTML tags, of course, there'd be brackets. And every time you have an opening tag, you have a closing tag. Should make sense. All right, so here it is without the T head, the T body, and the T footer. And it'll work. It'll render just fine. All right. So there's your table tag. There's the beginning of the table. There's the end of the table. There's the row that has the three headings right there. 
there's the first row of data. They're not showing all of it. And then there's the last row of data. And that'll give you this. Now, there's different things that you can do in here, such as, by default, your headings are going to be bolded. You can go in with CS and change the color. You can go in with CSS and change the font, etc. Any of that stuff you need to do. And I'm not sure if these are, I thought they were always left justified, but I could be wrong on that. All right. Then you've got the actual table data, which is left justified by default. All right. And again, that's the stuff that is in here. All right. Then notice they're using, it says, another table header at the bottom, which could have been a table footer too. But they're saying class equal left. Okay. And that's total sales. Then notice they got a blank cell. If they didn't put that blank cell, then the 1,339, you know, comma 264 would appear right here, and it wouldn't be, it wouldn't map, you know, map up. All right. So as they say, they're by default, but width of each table is determined automatically based on its content. Again, what does that mean? That means that tables try to be responsive. They may not be responsive in the way you want them to be, unless you take control, and if and as necessary, you use media queries. All right, by default, it says the content of a TH element is bold-faced and centered, and the TD is left aligned. I think we already mentioned that. Adding again, as it says, a header and a footer. I've already mentioned these to you. T head, T body, and T foot. That's the recommended way of doing that today. So they come back, and they've got, I think it's virtually the same table here, if not the same table. But you'll notice that now that row for the headings is in a T head tag. All right, the rows for the body, again, they don't show all of them, are in a T body tag. And at the end, notice again they used the TH there. I guess that would make sense to use a table header right there. But it's in a T foot tag. And again, as already mentioned, this doesn't look any different, but it's considered semantically more correct to do it that way. All right. It says it makes it easier to style a table with CSS. You can code these in any sequence. That used to be a big thing. All right. It used to be for whatever reason when they first brought up these T head, the T body, and the T footer. It, it's it almost to me it sounded weird. But what do you do? You put the heading, then you put the body, then you put the footer, right? But when they first did this, you had to put the header first, then the footer, then the body after it when they first did it. That's just the way it was set up for years. You had to do it that way. Now it doesn't matter the order in which you do it. Okay. All right, so some CSS skills for formatting a table. Take a look at these. The first one, border collapse. It says it determines whether space between the borders are collapsed to a single border of cells. Possibles are collapsed and separate. And notice that separate is the the default. It has to do again with the appearance of the table as you grow or shrink the size of the browser. All right. Border spacing, padding, some, I mean, most of the stuff that's in here we've already talked about. Okay. So they've come in here and they've gone up to that table. What have they done? Well, notice they've taken the table header right here and they put, they actually have added around here. Table right here where it says border, one pixel solid black. That puts the thing around the whole table itself. All right. Then what we're saying is for the heading and for the and for the footer, notice we've got, again, we've got borders around those. We've added padding. We've done some text alignment to push our numbers here, all of them to the right. All right. And you can see the other stuff. So here it is. And here it says this is it with, without collapsed borders. So by default, you get almost that gap-looking thing that we looked at yesterday. I don't like that appearance as much. Maybe that's what you like. Maybe that's if you're doing a table for somebody, maybe that's what they want. All right. Using the CSS3 structural pseudo classes for formatting tables. Now, we haven't talked much about these, but please look because this is pretty doggone important. 
if, if let's say that I've got a table and that table has in it a heading and it has 11 different elements and then it's got some kind of a footer at the bottom. You with me? So 1, 11, and 1. If I decide that I want to go in and I want to take every other row and do what's called zebra striping it, where the first one might look kind of grayish, the second one isn't, then grayish again, etc. This is one way of doing it. But the big thing about nth child is you can grab anything that's on a page. All right, by using nth child. Now, there's nth last child, which means give me the last one. Nth first child, which means give me the first one. All right. And there's a few other ones that are in here. But what they show you right here is it says typical n values. They've got odd and even. So here they've done, again, they've zebra striped, but what they've zebra striped in here was just the data. They've got different colors for the header and for the footer. When we get in and we're talking about um, next week, we talk about bootstrap, literally all you do is you add an attribute to there, which I don't know if it's called table striping or something like that, and boom, it does it for you automatically. As it says, it lets you format a table using classes or IDs. I'll tell you what, we'll be done in five minutes, so I'm just going to go till nine. I know I said I'd give you a break now, but let's just finish the chapter. All right. So as it says, how to use the HTML figure and fig caption elements within tables. I believe I mentioned this to you already, but what used to be kind of, for lack of better words, in vogue with a lot of different developers is they'd plan their whole site out as a humongous table regardless of how many pages it had in it. And then each page would be in its own subtable in this humongous table. All right, that's really considered a bad way of doing it today. One thing that was nice about doing that is it was possible if you knew what you were doing, that if you put an image inside of a table, you could chop up the image into pieces. And it was easier to sit there and play with those pieces. Some people still do things like that. All right. So as it says, there's a table within a figure, and they show you the associated, you know, notice. They set the width, they display at the block, and they set the margin. And as it says here, it, the figure can be used as a container for anything, including a table. To be honest with you, I probably never would have thought of doing this. All right, how to merge cells in a row or a column. There is a row span and there is a call span. Hopefully it makes sense to you that right here, that would be a call, you know, or I, I should say that this would be a call span. Does that make sense? Because the word sales is spanning one, two, three, four columns. This is a row span because the word book is spanning one, two rows. You can use row span, you can use call span, you can use neither, you can use both. As always, and as you probably guess, it depends on how you want to set your table up. All right, and they show you again the HTML for doing that. And as it says, the associated CSS. You know, again, I, I hope that you all realize, I know I've said this before, but I mean, a lot of times, unless we had this up and we were looking at it, the, the way for you to learn is for you to bring this stuff up. All right? It's not, not so much for me to sit there and bring something up and say, now let's change the color. I mean, if you want to do that, then bring it up and change the color. All right. How to provide for accessibility in tables. Again, caption we already mentioned. You can notice it says here, headers. Identifies one or more header cells that describe the content. So again, this would be something that typically would be used with a thing like a screen reader to figure out what's going on, all right? And scope, as it says, it tells if a cell is associated with a column or with a row, okay? And they show you some examples right there. I've never gotten into that much detail, but I, again, I suppose, especially if I was setting up some kind of a governmental site or something like that, I might have to, to do something like that. You can nest tables, which means literally just putting a table within a table. Now, you may agree, you may not agree. I think that looks pretty ugly. All right. So what they've done here is they've broken the central up into central north and central south. Just like you can put an unordered list within an unordered list or, a, a, you know, or an ordered list within an unordered list, etc. 
you can put a table within a table. And that's what they're what they're talking about here. So you'll notice here's your table, and boom, inside of here, you got another table. All right. As it says, you can nest one table with another by coding a table element within a TD. Nested tables are frequently used when tables are used for page layout. But again, that's not recommended to do it today. You should only use tables for tabular data. All right, so really the, the need to do that should be minimal at best. All right, wrapping. I think you all know what wrapping is by now. So if this was, if I was going to shrink this down, what do I want to have happen? If I make it bigger, your published will all be on one line. As I start to make it smaller, your published will be on two lines. And the same kind of thing with the titles that are in there. All right. One thing about using tables that you really want to be leery of is you, you know, this is one time when you might want to go small first because tables usually don't resonate very well on, on phones. They're usually very hard. You know, people are pinching and they're looking at it, but even then, you only have so much room on your phone. So there it is without wrapping, and you can see by doing that, it's adding over here, it's adding scroll bars. Here it's with wrapping. Okay, now how do you do that? You put no wrap if you don't want it to wrap. I think it's uh, wrap is the default. I don't know what I have running, but I must have something running that's whooping this up. Making a table responsive, we're just about finished. As it says, here's the, the table that they had earlier that's formatted for smaller screens. All right. Now, I'm going to say this. You may agree. You may disagree. I'd find that more a much harder to understand than what we saw earlier. All right. And most people, if they look at stuff, they want to get in, they want to get out. They don't want to sit there and have to think, geez, what do they mean by that? That's why today there's usually much better ways of doing this than setting it up in a table. The advantage of using a table is when you go in and you use your CSS, you can make sure that every row, every column, etc., looks the way you want it to look. And they've used the media query here, rather that basically says when you get down to that small a size, put everything on its own line with the display block. All right. All right, and that's it. So before we take the break, do this quickly. So this is the Chapter 12 Homework with Tables. Using the Chapter 10 PowerPoint, code the following HTML tables. It might not be 10 anymore. This was, I think when he created this, this was the, this was the third edition of the book, and we're using the fourth edition now. All right. But just grab a couple of the tables that are shown in there all right, and code them up. That's basically all they're asking to do. And for the other one, that's the one that's right here. Let's go. For chapter 12, create a web page that includes a table. Use all of the following elements. The table should have a single header row at the top and at least three rows in the body. That literally, if you used one of the ones in the book or even the one in the book, should take you five minutes to do. All right. Questions on anything we went over in either chapter today? Okay, it is 9.03. Take a break as long as you need to take a break, but you know, hopefully no more than 15 minutes or so. The rest of the period is lab, so you have virtually two hours and almost 50 minutes to work on homework and labs. Same kind of thing tomorrow. Tomorrow, again, we are going to go over first chapter 13, which is on forms. And then we will go over chapter 14 and chapter 14, which is much shorter than 13. 
is on audio and video. So we will do both of those tomorrow. Then we'll wrap up with 15 and 16 on Friday. All right, I'm done.